Hi guys, this is Rob with Deluxe Gaming, and I want to introduce you to what I do in my spare time. No, it's not skiing, or writing, or reading, it's playing Game Dev Tycoon. As sad as that may sound, I really, really like it. This is one of those few games that, yes, it's been out for a long time, but as you play it, and if you do play it, you understand that the game actually gets better over time because you can carry over the research that you've had from previous games to future games, and it's actually really a lot of fun. So here's what I think we'll do. I think we'll start a playthrough of Game Dev Tycoon and kind of we'll do a little bit of a tutorial too as well for those of you who have never experienced Game Dev Tycoon and all of its juicy wonderfulness. Um, <laughs> the, it really is a fun game, uh, but it, the game is essentially a tycoon game, but it's, it's unique in that you're not building this massive empire from this abstract a uh, variety of, of workers and buildings that you can't, you don't really have any connection with. It's actually quite the contrary. You, it's really personal game in that you're starting out, I'm not going to read some of this stuff because it's totally unnecessary. I have a lot of people that do the YouTubes on Game Dev Tycoon read all this stuff and I don't think it's necessary. Essentially, it's you. You are starting out as yourself and you are starting a new independent game development company. And you're starting out in, a, in, in, in your garage, right, essentially. So we're going to start a new company. We're going to call it Deluxe Gaming, of course. And, of course, it is Rob. And we'll just say that I've got blonde hair. Perfect. Okay, so here's where it get, gets interesting. So this game, as you play it, um, you will start to do these game reports. Every time you complete a game, you can do this uh, report. Uh, which is kind of like a research project on how your game, what, how well your game did. And what's interesting is you get information that will help you in future playthroughs. So this is where you actually get to, to decide whether or not you're going to use that information that you received from that research from the previous plays. And of course, I always do because I like that progressive feeling. Uh, I'm just going to overwrite a game here. I, I like that progressive feeling as as you play the game over and over and over that you feel like you're moving ahead. I've actually had playthroughs where all I do is just work on topics and just research those topics afterwards so that for future games I have those unlocked. Now I know there's cheats and stuff out there, but I'm not big on cheats. I do. I, I like to do everything myself. So. Um, when you first start a new game, here you are, you're in your garage, right? This is you, you know, it's not like this abstract tycoon game. It is actually you, personally, which is so cool. So you start the game, uh, you don't have a lot of money, uh, you really do have to get things moving fairly quickly because you have, uh, you, I think you start with 60k, it was either 60 or 70k, and every month it's costing you 8 grand for what? I don't know. Um, we'll just say... I don't know. I have no idea what the eight grand's for. Maybe you're paying yourself, right? Oh, a good business owner pays himself, right? Um, whenever you open up any menu, however, it does pause the game. So rest assured that this you can stop this clock simply by clicking on the screen. So that's just a left click, and it opens up that menu. And uh, at the beginning of the game, the only thing you can do is develop a new game. So you're like 14 years old. You're sitting in your in your garage, and you're like, I'm going to create a game. You've just learned how to do JavaScript or something. Well, actually, the, what's funny about this game also is it's a little bit of a history lesson. So I guess this would be around the uh, mid-80s, something like that, mid-80s, uh, is sort of where the, the whole scenario starts. So it's a bit of a history lesson as well. Uh, the platforms, the G64 or the Commodore 64, and of course the PC are around as platforms for games. And there was a few others, so it was Atari and some others. And with some mods that you can get for the game, of course you can add those in as well. But as time progresses, new platforms will become available right up to current day where you have the Ouya and the, the of course the PlayStation, the Xbox, all of that, right, becomes available. And with, uh, like I said, with certain mods, it'll open up a whole schwack of other ones too that uh, become available. But yeah, we'll see Nintendo and everything in here. Now, uh, just just another thing, I ha I do not have uh, mods running on this particular game right now for this series or at least episode. I don't know if this is going to be a series yet. It all depends on whether or not people like this, right? Um, I don't. Uh, I'm not using any mods. We are playing vanilla now. Normally, I do have mods installed. And really, there's only one mod that I really like playing with, and it's called the Percentager, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but there are mods you can get that do all sorts of crazy things, like add uh, different platforms, 
uh, over the years as, as, as a game developer. You can use different platforms for, for building your games, as well as new topics and all sorts of stuff. But we're just going to play vanilla so that uh, anybody coming along uh, will understand what we're doing without having to install any mods. So we're going to pick a platform to build our new game on, our very first game. Now, if you look here, so the development cost for building on the Commodore 64, sorry, the G64 is 20000 and right now, currently, the Commodore 64 has a 56.5% 56 market share. In other words, they are dominating the industry uh, for people buying new systems. They're buying more Commodore 64s than they are PCs, right? It all makes sense, right? Now, uh, part of the... Uh, uh, right, so also in here, so you'll notice these little things here. So this is part of the research that I've already accomplished within the game. So at some point in time, during previous playthroughs, I have built a game and then done that game report afterwards for that game. And if it had been on the platform, say the G64, I'd built an action game on the G64. I have figured out that the G64, the action games are pretty popular. Whereas the adventure games are really popular. RPG is pretty popular. Simulation is pretty popular. And strategy is very, it, it, it's just a really good match. Uh, so, uh, and same with the PC here. So you'll notice adventure games are really good on the PC. Uh, simulation games and strategy games and the other two are very good now it, it it is possible to have games that do not match a system so in other words strategy games are terrible on the game boy they call it a game link but game boy right okay and then there's other so that's one area where this game gets better you do that research and you get this information right at the beginning of the game which is tremendously helpful so the only thing i'm really concerned here for my first game is uh the market share Right now, the Commodore 64 is more popular. Of course, that's going to mean when I produce a game, even if it's a bad game, it's still going to produce more sales than it would for a PC. Now, the advantage otherwise is that it... Uh, if uh, Sorry, the disadvantage to doing the Commodore 64... Sorry, the G64. <laughs> I'm going to do that a lot during this series. Um, is that it costs 20000 to start development, whereas a PC would only cost five. But I think the potential is greater for the Commodore... The G64... Uh, so we're gonna go from there. So here's the other part uh, research starts to kick in so um, These here stand for young everybody and mature. So the, these are like the ESRB ratings on games where uh, they tell you whether it's Appropriate for everyone uh, for a mature audience or for a young audience now uh, it's actually Something that you get later on in the game that you can research that will allow you to build games directed at certain audiences and of course you'll be able to tell whether or not a werewolf game is good for a young audience after you've built the game and you do that game report and then of course it appears on here so again that research coming back uh, after you've played the playthrough so what it's saying here also is that i maybe i haven't built a werewolf game with mature audience and actually done that research to be able to verify that a mature audience and a werewolf game probably goes together pretty well uh it doesn't really mean anything right at the beginning of the game here because i'm not actually directing it to any particular audience until later. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it will as we play through. So, uh, also you're given a random four topics to start out with. The rest you have to research. Uh, but at the beginning of the game, you're giving, given, given a random four. So in this one, we've got werewolf, werewolf, UFO, mystery, and time travel. I don't think I've had UFO at all. Um, so then you can also pick the genre of the game, whether it's action, adventure, RPG, simulation, strategy. If you have researched, ha done the research in a previous playthrough, you'll be able to tell if, say, action and UFO goes well together, or adventure and UFO goes well together, RPG, simulation, or strategy. Now, it doesn't look like, oh, see, there's one. See, now I've actually done a game previously in another playthrough where I've done the research afterwards uh, to see what the game was like. I did, a, I've, in other words, I built a UFO strategy game um, not necessarily on the Commodore 64, but I've or on the G64, but I've done a UFO strategy game and then done that game report and the game report told me that, hey, if you do a UFO strategy game is a great combination. So I can already tell you that this would do better than most because great is the highest it can be. Uh, as far as I know, the great is the, great is the highest that combination can be. But I'm always looking to open up or, you know, do more research on my new playthroughs to see how they do. So let's see how a UFO action game would do. And what would we call that? We would call that uh, Space Freaks. 
That sounds good. Space Freaks, whatever. Space Freaks, it's a UFO action game where you're flying the UFO, I'm assuming, and I don't know. I don't know. It's a UFO action game. It's a little abstract. Sometimes I like to make up stories as to what it's going to be. Then you get to pick the graphics uh, that you'll be putting in the game. At the beginning, text is an option. I never use it because you're not going to get anything for that. Yes, it's half the price of the 2D graphics. And at this point, you know, cost is a factor. But um, you're, the 2D graphics, not only is it better um, than a text-based, not to say that you can't make a good text-based game like Zork or something at the beginning, um, but you're also getting experience with the 2D graphics uh, cards as well. Like you're getting that experience writing programs for those 2D graphics and you do it and that experience will allow you to move up in levels and actually move on to so this is a version 1 2D graphics and eventually be able to work on version 2 etc and eventually 3D graphics and stuff as well. So start development. So so far our cost is going to be 30k. We're going to start our development. So 30k spent on space freaks. We have started development and we've already got a bug and we as we do this Based on my skills, you're going to get these little bubbles that pop in and give us design points and technology points. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So the next, now it's going to go into three development stages. The first development stage, you get to work on the engine, gameplay, and stories, and quests. Now, research in previous playthroughs have told me that action games, specifically just action games, are really popular with the engine that's why it's got the three pop pluses pretty popular or sorry the gameplay is pretty important the engine's really important and the stories and quests not really important at all now all this is i got this information from researching a game with action has nothing to do with ufo you can at this point you can almost ignore what your topic is if you've got this information here that comes from action so in other words, if I build a werewolf game that's an action, it's going to be exactly the same. I'm going to have the exact same layout here. I'm going to want high engine, medium gameplay, and no stories and quests. So these three bars make up 100%. In other words, engine is down here, and it's taking up about 60%, something like that. And then the gameplay is taking up about 30%, and then the stories and quests is taking up about 10%. So you can never have zero. I would never, you could never put zero into story and quest. The minimum is 10%. So now, just to show you like how that's, what I mean by 100%, so even if I had turned all of these down to zero, it's going to balance it out evenly because they're all at the same spot. So in other words, if these are all in the same spot on the bars, it's gonna mean that it's just balanced, right? Um, if they're all in the bottom, it's going to mean the exact same thing, right? The only time, so it's 33%, 33%, 33%. Now, if I pump this all the way up to the top, this becomes 80% and then 10 and 10, right? I just happen to know these percentages. But anyway, uh, so just just remember these three bars, it's just, it, it will always equal that 100% mark. So uh, engine, we want maxed up because we got the three pluses now when you first start playing this game you will not have this information unless you install a cheat that allows you to have it but as you play through the game and do the research these will start to appear so during this series or this this series i will try to have uh, a mix of everything so you can kind of see what each different development stage for each type of game looks like so engine very very you need to have really high engine for an action or should have really high engine for an action, medium gameplay, and nothing for stories and quests. So it works out to about 60, 30, 10. And okay. So now he's gonna continue working, where he's gonna, of course, there's gonna be some bugs, and then some bubbles are gonna go into technology, and some bubbles are gonna go into design. And this is based on skill, and is also depend on, dependent on what you are putting into it. So in other words, artificial intelligence is more driven by technology. Whereas level design is more drivel, driven by design. So in other words, in this scenario where this is development stage two, and for an action game, dialogues wouldn't be important. Uh, level design, half important, and artificial intelligence is really important. So we're going to be putting more effort into the technology and less effort into the design, but we'll still be putting into both. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> It will as we go on, and, and as you play this game, it gets, I mean, it, it gets really good, and I, I think it's worthwhile looking at. 
Okay, so there we go. So, and also as you're doing this, you are also getting research points. Again, it is a skill-based trait to get research points. You just can't see and play with those skills quite yet. So as you get these points, you get so much that gets put into your research bubble here, which you can use later, you can spend these research points to acquire new abilities and, uh, uh, well, we'll look at this right, we'll look at the research right after this. So, uh, development stage three, four action. Um, here you see graphics really important, sound is kind of important, and world design is not important at all. And again, that's 60%, 30%, 10%. You can also select specific features that you can put into your your game as well. Now, at the beginning, you don't have a lot of features to choose from. Eventually, you can research new features to put into your game. Uh, so at the beginning, of course, graphics can't change that. We've put in, we're using 2D graphics, we can't change that. But we could actually make it so that there's no sound in the game. No, I wouldn't do that. Now, you'll notice that we're almost out of cash. I'm kind of hoping the odds of it being a hit, very, very, there's, there's like no chance. Your first game is not going to be a super smash hit, but you should be able to make enough money from your first game because your overhead is so low to be able to definitely move into your second game. So for a first game, that's pretty good. 11 design and 15 technology. There's some random elements. I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to pause it here. I guess I can't pause it. I actually have to finish it. Oh, there we go. Uh, your bank account is in the red. If it goes below 50k, you'll go bankrupt. Uh, generally, after 50k, then they give you an option to take out a loan, and then you got to pay back that loan with an incredibly high interest rate. But uh, yeah, you you have 50k at the beginning. Eventually, goes to 200k uh, as you sort of move progress through the game. You get a little bit more leeway as you go along, but it also becomes more challenging financially to be able to continue. Anyway, so uh, as long as one of these menus is up, the game is paused. So I'm not panicked, right? So um, now uh, there's some random elements that determine whether or not how high the design and technology is, but it's also skill-based. Skill is probably the most important. We can't see our character's skills quite yet. You won't be able to see your character's skill until you reach the next tier of the game. Um, so you just kind of got to hope for the best and hope it's going to be a hit. But uh, odds are it's not won't be a big hit right at the beginning. So now here you get your experience based on what you put into your game. So you'll notice we put a lot into engine, not quite as much into gameplay, and hardly any into stories and quests. And the experience you gain it reflects that. Now this is, becomes especially more important later on in the game when you have a team of people and you're trying to develop certain skills with certain people. And you could actually become a game company that specifically builds action games. And if you did that, there's the advantage is you're always going to have really high artificial intelligence experience as well as gameplay experience, uh, or sorry, engine experience, because those are the two most important elements of that game and what you're going to be putting the most into. So if you strictly stuck to action games, you could be very, very successful. You just got to make sure that you have the right topics. And you're able to rotate through those talks and you're not topics and you're not continually just building the same game all the time, right? And then your characters themselves get experience specifically too as well, that eventually you move up in levels and you get the ability to train yourself in, in areas that become highly ad advantageous. So uh, if you're happy with your results, which I, I don't think I've ever hit the trash game button, but I suppose if you're later on in the, in the, uh, in the game and you actually have a fan base and you're producing a game that's really 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 bad or you you put together some a game that just turned out really bad and these are really low you could technically hit the trash game so that you don't lose any of your fans but we don't have any fans right now so we got nothing to lose let's release the game all right so now the first reviews of our newly released game space freaks has come in and this is where it gets fun Wow, that's really good. Wow. Holy smokes, that's amazing for... Wow, that's pretty good. So, as you can see, we didn't need to do anything exacting at all to make that happen. It's just about... You know, there's there's some there's some fate uh, in there, just random chance, you know, the, you know, our design and technology. You know, we pumped in a good amount. Some of that's based on skill. Some of it, there's a little bit of chance there. And uh, picking a UFO slash action game was apparently a really good choice. And it also depends on what's popular uh, at the time. 
Um, could be a number of different things. So anyway, uh, Deluxe Gaming, a newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Space Freaks. The game received favorable reviews with such a good start. Deluxe Gaming are sure to ga gain fans quickly. Now, I have had, in the first section of the game, uh... Oh, oh, Space Freak sold 11,151 units in the first week in the market. We made the we made it in the charts at number nine. This is very good. This is a very good game, honestly, to start this well uh, already. So as you can see up here, I love these charts. It tells you Space Freaks has achieved a company sales record of over 10K units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Deluxe Gaming. Okay, uh, so Space Freaks was so successful that we now have 53 fans. So now we've got a fan base already. So now you can just watch this go up. And as we're doing that, we can actually do generate our game report. This is what I was talking about. So now we can actually do a report on Space Freaks, which was an a UFO action game. So we'll be able to tell if UFO, UFO slash action was actually a good combination. By the looks of things, it probably was. And uh, yeah, get any other information related to that, the topic and whatever. Now, research doesn't always tell you everything but it'll tell you the basics. It'll, basics. it'll always tell you what the topic and the genre, whether or not they're compatible. Okay, and then you get these news reports that come up all the time. They get a little annoying. I'm not gonna read them all. It's just saying the uh, Commodore 64, the G64, customers really like it better over the PC, right? Whatever. Uh, might spell the end of other computers, whatever, computer companies. Um, so now, here's here's our game report. This is so important. UFO and, UFO and action is a great combination. So the next time we do try to do a UFO and action game, it's gonna say great combo. Stories and quests seems to be not so important for this type of game. And of course, that's where you know you get that little uh, negative sign in your uh, as you're building a game, as you're building an action game that would tell you that stories and quests are not that important. I already have all those here because I've done a lot of action games while playing this. So it will continue to make sales. And while you're doing that, you can actually uh, do a little bit of research if you want. So you can come in here and use some of these research points that you've been earning as you build those games. So custom engine is so important. Engines where you put together a whole bunch of different traits for game building that uh, you can just click on that gum, uh, game engine rather than putting it, building a brand new engine every time you build a game. That way you've always got, you've got something to, so in other words, if you're working with a certain type of graphics and you're doing uh, achievements and stuff like that, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You get, your game engine will have all that included. Um, now we can't quite build one yet because we don't have enough research points. We'll have to do at least one or two more games. You can also at any time come in here and build or uh, research new topics to work on which becomes really important if you run out of options with the ones that you have. And eventually you'll probably want to do a couple extra, but I try to just work on the ones I have and try to make sure that I, you know, unlock a lot of the research for the ones I have as I go along. Eventually, I'm sure I'm going to have them all unlocked. As you can see, I've done a lot of research in airplanes, superheroes, you know, whatever. So I'm not going to do any research right now, but I am going to jump in and develop a brand new game almost immediately. So. The UFO, that was really good. So now, for example, with our research, if we click on UFO and we click on, ad, oh, sorry, UFO and action, see, there it is, there's our research. It has told us that this is a great combination. But I'm not gonna do another UFO action game. There's already one, we've already just released a, uh, released a UFO action game, and a lot of times it's kind of self-defeating to keep releasing the same type of game. I mean, you as, you as a gamer, of course, you know, you don't want to be playing the same game all the time. Nor would you be impressed with a company that that's all they did was produce the same game all the time. Call of Duty. <coughs> oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Uh, okay, so let's uh, UFO Adventure. Uh, flow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what do we call this? Uh, uh, flying UFOs with mouse clicks sounds like a terrible title and i bet you it will be but you know what we're going to get the research for it we're going to figure out if ufo and adventure is a bad genre is a bad combination which it probably is we're going to use our 2d graphics and away we go we are starting to so again adventure games are different from action games remember this these development stages have nothing to do with your topic just to do with your genre so adventure games Stories and quests are very important. Um, now, the minus signs, I'm sure you could get technical and say that 
the one minus sign is a little bit more important than the double minus sign. But generally speaking, I do this. I just, you know, that means that 80% of my effort is being put into stories and quests, 10% into gameplay, 10% in an engine, into engine. Even though gameplay, I probably could do this and should do this a little bit, but I just play it safe. And it's a little bit difficult when you get into later areas of the game when you have larger teams and specific people are doing specific areas and it's hard to get it perfectly balanced so a lot of times I just keep it clean and do this and I've had 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10 games doing this so this works so if you get the three pluses that always gets maxed a double plus game always about or a double plus area about the middle and everything else just bring it right down to the bottom trust me it works Okay, so off we go. We've got some design and technology. Generally, adventure games, a lot more design because of things like stories and quests, right? So here we go. Dialogue. See, another very designy, right? Whereas artificial intelligence, not important, so not much technology. Level design, not that important, so... Uh, but there's all of my effort is going to be in dialogues, which is very designy. And as you can see, we are getting research too as well, and we can use that wonderful research to give ourselves a new game engine soon. So, world design, very important. Three pluses. Graphics, about middle of the road. And our sound, not really important. But they, like I said, nothing's ever zero. It still works on a little bit. And we are including basic sounds. Perfect. Look at our Space Freaks has done very well. Space Freaks is now off the market. It sold 30,000 units, generating 216,000 in sales. That's amazing for the first title. Usually it does not do that well, so that's pretty good. The goal here is to get about a million dollars. With a million dollars, you can move on to the next section of the game. As soon as you're finished a game, and this little finished finish appears up here, you kind of just want to wait and let your guy work out the bugs. You could release a game with bugs, but as we all know, that's generally not a good tactic. Uh, so this is just saying uh, there's rumors that a Japanese company, Ninvento, not Nintendo, Ninvento is planning to launch their very own home gaming console, etc., etc. Uh, and they, many experts think that the home gaming consoles will take off. Uh, doubt, will, doubt that the home gaming consoles will take off. You know, these are all based on what happened, right? Nobody thought Nintendo would do very well, but look at look at what's happened, right? So, and if you kind of wait, you're a little bit patient at, uh, at the end of your uh, development phase, um, it, it will often give you a few more design and technology points. And it's not, it's, there's no problem with waiting uh, at the end of uh, development if you're not doing any marketing. Now, marketing isn't something that you can't do, it, or is something that you, can, you can't do until later. But uh, it's just something to keep in mind. If you have advertising and there's hype for your game, um, it will start to decline if you wait too long here. The key is just make sure you get all your bugs worked out and give them, give them a, you know, 15 seconds uh, or your team 15 seconds or so to add as much design and technology as they can. So now we're just going to finish the game. And I don't think this one's going to do as well. Uh, I think we had 11.15 last time. This one's 13.9. You know, it might be okay. But I don't think the combination of UFO and adventure will be as good by far as UFO and action. So let's just take a look and see. While you're waiting, you can. Uh, you, we could technically start to develop a new game, but we'll just we'll just wait. We'll see what the uh, reviews are like here. First reviews are in. Wow, wow, that's far better than what I thought. See, when I think of an adventure game, I think of you know those static games where you click. They're clicky, right? You click on you click on the closet to look in the closet, and then you click on the you know what I'm talking about adventure games. So I'm actually really surprised that this did far better than I expected. Wow, very good. So let's uh, let's do a game report on that and see see UFO and adventure apparently is not that bad. Yeah, wow, it didn't do as well as our first uh, game, but uh, it's doing pretty good. Pretty impressed. Uh, Nintendo, Ninvento is announcing the console named the TES, blah, 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 cartridge, controllers, etc. I actually owned that first one. It was awesome. I love that first game unit. Uh, UFO, and Venture, UFO and Adventure is an okay combination, so it's not as good as great. 
and sound seems to be not so important for this type of game. And yes, of course, uh, we already have all the adventure research, so we already knew that, but the UFO and adventure, we did not know that, so we know if we have to include adventure uh, in, in a UFO title, we can, and it's not going to hurt us. But, you know, the rank is definitely not where it was the first time. The first one, I think we were rank 9. This one, I think we started off at rank 20 or something. I don't know. Anyway, we are gaining fans, and we did make some money. Let's uh, develop one more game, and then we can do some research. So this one, we will do UFO again. And see, now if we look, click on Adventure, see, it's an okay combo. See, because we did that research. But we're going to do a UFO RPG. Oh, I'm sure you guys probably know UFO RPG games, but we're going to call this UFO Quest. Sounds very RPG-ish, 2D graphics, and away we go. I know this seems a little repetitive at first, but you know, you're just starting out, right? This game gets pretty, pretty intricate later on. Once you've got a team and you're managing a research department and stuff, it gets, you know, far more interesting. Of course, with an RPG, stories and quests are really important. Gameplay. Uh, pretty important, but not as important as we love story quests and an engine not really important at all And away we go and we are getting our so as we gained experience of course We were getting better at this technology and design thing, too uh, So design dialogues really important level design medium importance and hit okay and away he goes There's our 50 research points that we need to build our first game engine so when they scratch their head, you'll notice everything grinds to a halt because they're thinking so hard about what they need to do next. Flying UFO with, sorry, flying UFO with mouse clicks is now off the market. It sold 24,000 units, not as good as the 30 on the other one, and it generated 172, not quite as good as the 216 on the other one, but still not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So now that's off the market. Now later on in, in, in this game, once you start to move up and and to big, have bigger published, uh, larger, uh, larger games get larger games published, they last longer on the market and they make substantially more money and of course allows you to do bigger and better things. So to my development stage, actually I don't need to change a thing because Adventure and uh, RPG are identical for the development stage 3, so I can just hit OK. Done. So the percentager, that was the one mod I was talking about. Um, that's the one I, I really like playing with. So that one actually tells you the exact percentages that you're using up on those different stages. I'll explain it more the next time we do another game. So it looks like we've cleared up all the bugs. We've got Design 10, Technology 5. Yikes. Uh, okay, new game platform. Uh, the TES by Nin Ninvento has been released. So now we've got another platform that we can build games on. And we're going to hit finish. Definitely the design and technology on this one is not nearly as high, so I don't think the combo is going to be as good. So if you hold, if you hit the mouse button when it's doing that, it'll speed that whole thing up. We've almost reached level 2, which is fantastic. As we get level 2, like say, in stories and quests, we will get some research options to research something that we can include into a game engine. Sometimes they're not in game engines, but most of the time they are, but it's really, really important, so getting those levels up. And that's why building the same genres of games can be really beneficial because you can get those higher levels quick, more quickly and be able to research those things more quickly. So there we go, releasing our game. I don't think the ones, this one's going to be nearly as popular and I think I am right. Four by Star Games. Uh, four by Informed Gamer. Five, they've seen better at Game Hero. And meh, meh by all games bastards okay so this one's definitely not going to be a hit let's do our game report and that will tell us why ufo and rpg is a bad combination yeah i can guess I, aliens and rpg different ufo rpg yeah maybe not so hot but i bet you the simulation would be pretty good okay so uh finished uh, hi there i've just finished ufo quest and i think you have potential i'm con i'm in the contracting business and we could use your skill use skills like yours if you're ever short on cash, just let me know and we'll see if I have some work for you, Jason. So now I can do contracts. So now at any time after when I'm not doing anything, 
Uh, so UFE, UFO and RPG is a terrible combination. And world design seems to be very important for this game, but that's okay, we don't need that. All I'm interested in is this. UFO and RPG is a terrible combination. I will never build another UFO and RPG game again. And like I said, that research stays with me for as long, for every time I play this game, it will be there. So that's fantastic. fantastic. I will never make that mistake again. Perfect. So now we have 67 research points. So we can actually go into our research bar or menu here and click on custom game engine. So now I am researching the ability to build a custom game engine. So that doesn't build me a custom game engine. It's just the ability to build one. So then we can take our skills and put it into a game engine and use that for any future production. Done. We've researched a custom research custom game engine. Now we can create a custom game engine. So in our new custom game engine, we're gonna have 2D graphics version two, but it's gonna cost us 50K every time we build a game to use that high-end graphics. Then linear story, um, hey, linear story is better than just a scattered story, right? Uh, it's gonna cost us 30K every time we put a linear story in our game. Wow, that's pricey. And 10K every time we wanna add a save game feature. And we can name our game engine. We're gonna call it the Newbie Engine Max 2D Version 2. No, oh yeah. Okay, I ran out of space. It doesn't have to be that long. I could have called it called it one. Or left it as game engine number one. But I I, I like to make my own names for my game engines. So there we go. Create engine. And now he's going to take that time to actually build that engine. Doesn't take very long for your first one. Later ones take a long time. Now the wonderful thing... Oh, we sold... I uh, didn't get to see that. Another wonderful thing about building a game engine is you continue to get research points because you're working, right? Anytime you're working, you get research points. Now, with contracts. Um, well, you can do contracts in between building games. Uh, the advantage of doing contracts is not so much the money. Um, the money is can be okay. Well, let's just take a look. We're going to do find contract work. We built our engine, by the way. So in four weeks, we have to come up with 13 design points and five technology points. They will pay us 19,000 if we accomplish it and penalize us 5k if we don't accomplish it. If we do not accomplish this in four weeks, we'll have to pay 5k. If we accomplish this in four weeks, we will get paid 19k. And the job is a logo animation. So you can look through the contacts here. So we have to accomplish this in four weeks and make 23, but that's substantially more work than this one, right? Now, eventually as you get teams, uh, you'll get team members that are better at technology work and team members that are better at design work. So you can focus on contracts that you know you can accomplish, right? And some contracts just can't be accomplished. You gotta watch out for it. You know, uh, uh, I've seen three week contracts that are just, there's no way you could possibly do it. This one looks pretty reasonable, but I think the most reasonable one is this one. So let's just accept this contract. And the advantage to doing this contract is not just, not so much the money, but the research points we get. So we don't have to do another whole title to get some more research points. I can just do a contract. So accept contract and away he goes. So yeah, he's working on both his technology and design. And of course, later on when you're actually able to train your character and train other team, member, team members, you can train them to be better at design or to better at technology, right? So nice job, we will transfer 19k to your account, and we got a few research points for that too as well. Uh, I just got word, client was very happy, excellent work, come back, you can get more anytime. Anyway, so now let's get back to building games. So now we have a new game engine, so we can apply our game engine to any game that we make our newbie engine max 2d right and we are going to pick a topic we are going to do a ufo again of course we should be mixing up our topics a little bit to add some variety but i like to make sure that i do all the research on a topic uh, as i do a playthrough and it really doesn't matter at the beginning anyway um, you will eventually get a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 uh, so i'll come back to that you will eventually get a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 title at some point yes it is possible to get tens all the way through even at the beginning i know i have seen a couple youtube channels where they say it's impossible but i've had it so uh now we are going to do a ufo simulation we haven't researched that one and we now we have a new platform on the market so we could 
Simulation, now I've done research on this uh, unit and it's okay with action, RPG, and sim simulation. Terrible for strategy, terrible for adventure. Now why would I pick this over this? Because, you know, action, adventure, RPG, simulation, strategy is so much better for this console. But, look at the market share. The market share is actually higher for the Ninvento entertainment system. So, I, technically speaking, if I had a hit simulation, it's gonna do, I'm gonna make more money on this unit than I will on this unit. Now, the downside is I actually have to buy the license to be able to use, to build games on this, uh, this unit before I can actually do, I have to actually pay $80,000 to acquire a license. But I'll tell you right now, it's usually worth it because the Commodore 64 or the G64, based on history, doesn't do so well in the long run. So you got to start, uh, you know, investing in uh, in some different consoles. So uh, UFO simulation, we will call this. Uh, hmm. We will call it uh, Alien. Oops. Alien Warplane. War. No, Alien War Strike. Yeah, that's okay. Alien War Strike sounds good, so I picture this alien flight simulator kind of thing. So now our engine offers you always have the option to do text-based or 2D graphics. These never go away. And then after that, you get whatever your engine will offer you. And our engine in this particular scenario, I know it looks like oh, you just get all the choices, but that's not true. You get whatever your engine can offer you, plus you get the option to do 2D version one and text-based always. So we're gonna do 2D version two from our engine and away we go. So now our engine itself is gonna make us get higher design and technology in general. That doesn't mean it's gonna be a hit. It still has to be a good combination UFO simulation. If that's a good combination, will work really well with our new engine. If it's a bad combination, it doesn't matter how good our engine is. Um, we've also, remember we were able to include linear story in our engine, which is gonna cost us a little bit more, more money and we can actually have a save game in our new game, which is fantastic. And with simulation, gameplay is really important. Engine's medium important, and stories and quests, not really important at all. So here we go. Now, you'll notice we start to get a lot more design and technology uh, come up because of our new engine. Makes a lot of difference. So, uh, development stage two, uh, dialogue's not important for simulation, level design, sort of important for simulation, and artificial, inten if artificial intelligence, really important for simulation. All right, come on. Big bucks, big bucks. Uh, well, it's going up pretty good, pretty good. We get one more development stage. World design not important, sound kind of important, and graphics really important. I try to, you know, I try to do it, you know, just a little under half for the kind of important ones. Okay, and away we go. So here we go, we're hoping, I'm hoping for around, you know, anything above 15 would break a record. Uh, recently released uh, Ninvento home console uh, has been a massive success and the numbers have exceeded expectations by far. Uh, people are saying I love the games, blah blah blah, they like it better than using a keyboard for games. So not quite as good as I would hope, but I'm just going to wait until I'm done with my bugs, maybe see if I get a, one or two more points with design or technology. Oh, there's one for technology. Nice balance, 13 and 13, very nice. So we're going to finish that up. We're out of money because we spent all of our money on our engine. Yes, the engine cost a lot of money. And, oh, we got level two in gameplay. And we spent money on the uh, new new console too uh, so that we could write uh, software on it. So that's great. Look at this. We got graphics, new graphics level. We got artificial intelligence. We got story quests. So that means we get better at, at working on those as well as it opens up research options for new uh, abilities on our in our game engines. Also, I myself, went up a level, which means I will do better at design and technology, which is fantastic. And we have new research available, game tutorials. So now I could run in here and do the gameplay research on game tutorials. However, I just built a new engine and in order, well, you know, I'm gonna do the research anyway, but in order for us to get the benefits of game tutorials, we have to build a whole new engine. I, and I generally, by a rule, don't, build a new engine unless I have new graphics to work with. 
So here's Alien War Strike. Eight, very good. Seven, that's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, six. Oh, bummer. Okay, so even with the new engine, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be hit. It all has to do with whether or not that combo is going to be good, right? And sometimes it's just... It's just random happen chance. Sometimes, just like with any game, it just may or may not work, right? So we still got decent sales. It's actually pretty good. Pretty good. Actually, the new console, I think it's just... More people own that console than they did the G64, so we're selling more, you know? It's just that simple. So we're going to do our game report on Alien War Strike and see how well the UFO and simulation combination is. And sometimes it's not totally accurate. You know, you have your vision of what? That's an okay combination. That's kind of what I thought. And stories and quests, not that important. So let's, uh, I'm going to do one more game and then we're going to call this an episode. But uh, we will finish off our... UFO, so we've done everything but strategy. Oh, strategy's already a great combo. So, let's see if we can't get a... Oh, no. Uh, hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to pick, because I've already done strategy on a different playthrough. Let's find... See if we can find one that uh, is... So, what I'm looking at here. So, if I look at the Ninvento, I want to find something that's action RPG or simulation that would be really good. Uh, simulation mystery. Oh, well, we've never had a mystery simulation, so let's do the research on that. I don't mind doing the research at the beginning of the game because I really have low expectations for income anyway. Um, eventually, you're going to run into a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 anyway. So, mystery st simulation. Uh, hmm. Private Jones. Jones, private investigator. PI. Awesome. So we're using our new engine with our new graphics and away we go. Again, the reason I'm doing simulation here is because of the console. Recent studies suggest that increasing variety of game devices also creates a market for more specialized games. Some platforms become more popular with younger gamers while others cater to the more mature age group. So now we're getting the option to do the research so that we can uh, apply our games to certain age groups. So as as more and more developers enter the market, we expect developers to focus their games on specific age, specific age groups to really make an impact. And new research has become available. Target audience. That one I will be researching as soon as I have the chance, because then I can do research uh, on each individual game and determine what's going to be good for each age group. Okay, so gameplay engine all looks good. Simulation was our... I think the last game we did was a simulation, so it goes to the last one that you just did. So these, these bars are where they were the last time we did it. So simulation last time, simulation this time. Like I said, mystery has nothing to do with it. UFO has nothing to do with it. It's just the genre. So we won't have to change anything on these uh, development phases, which is fantastic. Uh, not looking great so far. So good. Awesome. And like I said, the goal here uh, at the beginning is to get some of the research done. And then uh, you want to make a million bucks so that you can move into your bigger digs and hire a team. Once you hire your team, the game changes dramatically. We made 226,000 on Alien War Strike, which is okay. That's as much as we made on our first game, which is pretty good, right? Uh, this one, uh, it's going okay. I, you know, we're not, oh, we might break a record here. No. So let's finish off those bugs. Maybe we'll get another point or two in design. Private Jones. Oh, it's supposed to be Jones. Private Private Jones, Private Investigator. Yeah, that's kind of redundant. Oh, it might be breaking a record for design. Yep, we broke a record for design. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, we've got all sorts of experience. Level 2 in world design, level 2 in level design, engine, uh, sound. Oh, well, we'll get lots of new research options here. Releasing our game, new research, mono sound. Right on. I don't know if anybody, well, I remember mono sound. I don't know if anybody else does. Uh, the Vina, uh, Sega, has confirmed recent rumors about a new gaming console announced the Mas Master V. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be one of Nintendo's competitors. Ninvento, sorry. Uh, and here comes Private Jones, PI. How'd we do? Oh, it's mediocre. A little better than medi- uh, No, it's mediocre. Very mediocre. So we'll do our game report and see how that was. And I think I'm ready, just about ready for a hit, but... You know, uh, we may have to build a new engine, but we're going to wait until we have earned enough um, experience in our 2D engines to do, uh, to build a new game engine 
So mystery and simulation is okay combination. Graphics, not that important. Okay, so let's see here. Let's, I would, I'd really like a hit now. I'm ready for a hit. Um, oh, before we do this, uh, we're going to do research on target audience. Because that's really important. Now we can, and we don't need to build an engine to, to, to make, to have that useful to us. Whereas mono, we'd have to build an engine. Uh, to integrate that into our game designs. So target audience, now when we build a new game, develop a new game, we can pick whether or not it's directed at a young audience, everybody, or mature. So now we can go to Werewolf, and I know I've done a lot of research on Werewolf, but I don't think I've done the research or been successful at learning whether or not mature is popular with Werewolf, and I'm pretty sure, based on this, Werewolf and Young don't go together. Everybody, it's pretty good. I'm pretty sure mature werewolf games are going to be quite popular. So we're going to, we could do an action game, which is a great combo. Uh, adventure, no. RPG is a great combo. Simulation, terrible. And strategy, terrible. So either an action or an RPG. Um, I like RPGs. Let's do an action. Or, sorry. Hey, RPG werewolf. <coughs> Excuse me. A werewolf game that is an RPG game that is designed for mature audiences only. Oh, and you know what? I'm not gonna do it on the Nintendo sy Ninvento system, even though it's got a higher market share. Um, I am gonna do it on the G64 while it's still around and has some market share, uh, just because, look at this, the G64 and mature, uh, mature games tend to do very, very well. And we are doing an RPG, which is pretty good on that. Actually, how was the action? Whoops. Whoops, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, action on, oh, it's the same. So two pluses for a G64 for action and two pluses for an RPG. So it'd be the same whether I did either one. And our game engine. So this should be pretty good. I think a mature audience and werewolf is an awesome combination. Uh, werewolf and RPG is an awesome, awesome combination. Mature and G64 is an awesome combination. Whoops, oh, oh, go back. I want to name the game. Uh, it is going to be called Where. Uh, where gorilla? I probably spelled that wrong. I apologize, gorilla. It's probably ah. Oh, who cares, right? Uh, where? Hold on. We're gonna put a dash in there. Takes attacks. <laughs> where gorilla attacks? All right. And same game engine. Okay, so I feel like this one will do pretty good. Hopefully we get a 10 out of 10 in there. May not get 10 out of 10s for everything, but we may get a 10 out of 10 under there. I'm hoping. Let's just watch these design, the design and technology build up here. Ooh, lots of design there, that's awesome. Oh yeah, see, dialogues and level design are hot give you lots of designs. So we're our design's probably gonna be quite high and our technology might be a little low. Just certain games are require more design, that's all. Uh, so world design and graphics. All right, and away we go. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Steve O'Connell, a reporter from Planet GG. We've heard that heard a rumor that your company's developed a game, a game for mature audiences. Would you be willing to give us an interview about this? I will give you an interview. Absolutely. Great. Thank you for your time. We will publish the interview next week. Look at that. 14 design already. Wow, look at the bugs. 10 bugs. Uh, Sega has been released. Wow. Uh, Planet GG has recently published an interview with Deluxe Gaming. According to the interview, the company is working on its first game targeted at, at mature audiences. Rob, owner and CEO of, CEO of Deluxe Gaming said, We think that players are looking for a more, more mature content in games, and we are willing to take the risk to give it to them. I don't know if I actually said that, but... Uh, many industry experts say that sooner or later, games with mature themes will become more common. We are curious to see how the market will react to these games. Well, we all know how uh, that happens. And you'll notice that we got hype, so that was basically free advertising. Fantastic. Uh, Private Jones PI only did 109,000. Whew, that's not very much, is it? All right, so I'm gonna work through all these bugs. We're done with development, but don't hit finish right away. Work through those bugs. You also have the opportunity, look at that, 20 design. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Feeling good about this one. Okay, Sega, yeah, yeah. Sega's released, blah, blah. 
Okay. Uh, oh, we got a bug even at the end there. Uh, fix it. Okay, ready to go. Good rule of thumb is as soon as the hype starts coming down, it's time to release. Uh, I think that only counts later, though. So we're oh, yeah. See, there it goes. Okay. New record. 20 design. Not a lot of technology, but our design should make up for it. So let's just whip through this. Release the game. Come on. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Come on. Come on. 10 out of 10. We need a 10 out of 10. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, eight. Oh, so, oh, you know, not even that close. Okay. No, not even a nine. No, darn it. So above average, but not, not the game that's going to bring us up to a million. So I think on that note, um, We'll generate our game report and then we will, whoops, we'll call that an episode and we'll try and get that 10 out of 10 next time. If you guys are interested in me doing more of these, we'll do it next time. I, I would love to do a series on this if you guys are interested. So if even one person says to me, I would love to see more, I will do more. So please let me know. Okay, and that's it. All right, guys, but look at the sales actually pretty good. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, rank. I, we were rank 8 or something up there. Pretty good. I'm very happy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you want to see more of Game Dev Tycoon, please just let me know and we'll make it happen. Okay, take care.